we're uh, really glad to have you. Glad to have you coming back to the seminar. Uh, I certainly uh, enjoy uh, um, the sauna, and I've, you've, I think you've seen a few of our uh, videos of me singing and talking about the sauna. So I saw it from February. It was wonderful. It was yes, so it's lots of fun. So well, let's just dive in. Um, yeah, yeah, what is what is so healing about sauna space? Well, sauna, sauna space, first and foremost, is a sauna. Uh, we, we want to sweat for detoxification and for all these restorative cellular effects that we have when we sweat passively in a sauna. But with sauna space, we use um, incandescent lights, a very high wattage um, red glass incandescent uh, bowl that delivers light therapy, uh, mm -hmm. also called photobiomodulation. Basically, these near infrared wavelengths stimulate the mitochondria to uh, heal the cell, repair the DNA, and uh, reduce inflammation, uh, or quite a wide array of cellular healing effects that are kind of separate, uh, although related to uh, the benefits of heat therapy. So um, it's, we're, we're, we're beings of light. We need near infrared light every day. If we look at sunlight, uh, depending on what study or who you talk to, it's between 43 or even over 50% of sunlight is near infrared. So the, the largest uh, neutrifying component of sunlight is near infrared. And we know now because we've studied the mitochondria that, hey, we have a light receptor protein in there. So we need a daily dose of near infrared light. And, uh, you know, study after study has shown that a daily dose of of sauna therapy, of sauna sweating, uh, just has benefits that apply to all cells, all the tissues and all the things. So with sauna space, we do both of these at the same time. Uh, and then uh, something with EMF now in sauna space. Uh, I know you guys have done, made some changes there. Yeah, last year actually at, at your retreat, we introduced our first kind of prototype version of our Faraday sauna. So we've, we've taken the tire sauna and said, hey, how can we improve the therapy, how can we optimize the experience? Well, let's remove the electro, the man-made electromagnetic stress uh, from, from the environment. And, and we can talk about the cellular effects of, of man-made EMF stress, but they are, they are undesirable and certainly in a healing space, you wouldn't want that. Um, there's some sp specific things that counteract the ability of the body to heal, actually counteract the heat therapy itself. So um, our, even our basic sauna now has a grounding mat that protects you primarily from the wired voltage. So EMF stress from electricity. And, and then in our upgraded model, there's a basically a stainless steel grounded cover and curtain that create a six sided Faraday cage within which you sit, do the same sauna space, light and heat therapy, but now it's, you're completely protected from uh, wireless electricity, like uh, like cell phone signal, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and and so forth, and though those are they're things that we don't feel, but necessarily or see, but it is a pervasive nervous stress, and it's something that you know we we ideally we wouldn't have in our lives at all, but we're really stuck with it. You, you can't go yeah. anywhere where you don't have cell phone signal. So um, sauna spaces uh, optimize the sauna environment by removing that um, with our Faraday uh, our Faraday liner option. And the uh, Faraday uh, liner option, help us understand uh, what, what that is. That's uh, a little cloth curtain. Yeah, so for those of you who haven't seen it, our, uh, the sauna space sauna is like a little bed, a traveling Bedouin tent kind of looking sauna. It has a little curtain on the front. Inside there is a four light array that produces the light and the heat. So what we've done is uh, we've created an optional liner upgrade that's basically a... a it's a custom made stainless steel cloth material. So it has stainless steel microfibers and it's third party tested to block these high frequencies, which are really short wavelength and they penetrate really well. Um, so the, the fabric is well tested to block um, um, wireless, wireless electric fields, uh, RF, high frequency stuff. And it's unique because it's not a big metal box. People think of a Faraday cage, for those who know that, as yeah. something from a scientific laboratory, big, thick metal plating. We've managed to accomplish effectively the same thing with a, a really lightweight um, fabric that's really affordable. So this year's second generation Faraday uh, upgrade, our Faraday sauna, is um, um, quite a bit reduced in price because we've innovated 
uh, with our own fabric. So it's a, it's a big upgrade. It performs better. It's third party tested to block 5G frequencies, which are higher frequencies that are being introduced now for cell phone technology. Mm-hmm. Um, and all that is an, kind of an option that you can, you can get uh, if you want in your sauna space sauna. Um, okay, so uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, heat shock proteins. Uh, and you're talking to me that uh, sauna space has an a impact on heat shock proteins? Well, all saunas do. Uh, if, we, if we heat the body up enough and we get to begin raise cell temperature a few degrees for a period of minutes, we start to get heat shock protein production in the cell. And so all heat therapies do that if you're doing it in a sustained fashion, but, um, um, and, and we really want that. Like that's really the magic of what sauna does and all the studies you see on longevity and all these other things, like how can it possibly uh, work and apply to such a wide array of, of diseases and, and uh, conditions? Um, it's because this system kind of exists in every cell and it's a twofold uh, response. One is to detoxify. And I think people more and more understand that, that saunas are, are amazing for detoxification. But there's another more intriguing uh, role that, that's going on here and it's called protein refolding. So the heat shock proteins uh, refold um, proteins inside and outside of the cell and they restore protein functioning. For example, with insulin resistance, the insulin comes in and um, it, it can't bind very well to the in- insulin receptor tail on the cell uh, because it, the proteins are misfolded on the insulin receptor. And, uh, and so you have insulin resistance and metabolic disease and so forth. The uh, sauna has been shown to reduce um, insulin resistance. And uh, what's thought is the primary pathway of that is that the heat shock protein goes out and it refolds the insulin receptor protein and makes it bind better to insulin. So you're improving insulin signaling. And that's just, you know, that's an example of how there's like a a, um, organism wide global effect of doing this heat shock therapy, this heat shock protein response at the cell level on on the entire body. And so that's one example, you know, there's others examples that are, that are systemic as well. And, and they're all related to how these heat shock proteins and go, And, and instead of they're not just detoxifying, they're literally rebuilding your protein structure uh, from the cell up. And if you've ever seen proteins um, on a computer model or on a, on a, on, you know, on paper, it's like a watered up piece of paper with all these ribbons coming out. It's a very complicated. Yeah. Yeah. So, excuse me, one or two misfolded um, components of it may cause it to not work well or not work at all. Right. But, but yeah, here's yeah. the way that we can get we can restore that function, and this is not specific to any kind of tissue or cell. This applies to really all cells of the body. So uh, it's uh, it's really fascinating that that's going on. It's a way. It's such a simple way. You just sit here. You sit in a sauna and sweat passively, and you have you're literally resculpting the body from the cells up. Now, uh, how does this? Uh how does man-made uh, EMF exposure and MS risk, uh, autoimmune risk uh, work? Well, for those who don't uh, want to dive deep into it, uh, Dr. Martin Paul has done the, the seminal research in how the uh, man-made EMF, let's just say cell phone signal, for example, affects the body, affects the biology of the human body. It basically does two things. It causes really rapid free radical formation and peroxynitrite cycle um, basically dysfunction, and it opens the calcium channel. So calcium is a molecular, is a cellular uh, messenger. Uh, it, the cells inside and outside of the cell use calcium to, to do basic cellular communication. This dates back to the incorporation of the mitochondria into the, into the single cell organism. It's a, it's a basic fundamental thing called calcium signaling that people think, oh, calcium's good for my bones, right? Most of the calcium is in the bones, but the small amount of calcium in your body has this fundamental cellular signaling role that's super important for just basic, uh, basic functioning, basic uh, cellular processes. So the man-made electric field causes all the voltage-gated calcium ion channels, the gates that control calcium entering the cell, it causes them to open. So if you're under the influence of a cell phone signal, all of your calcium uh, voltage gates open, calcium floods into the cell, you get massive uh, 
you get way, way too much production of ATP and uh, production of the reactive oxygen species, which cause uh, peroxynitrite formation and, and carbamate formation. These are free radicals, so they damage our DNA. This is a very clear mechanism by which, even though it's low energy stuff, it's not ionizing radiation like an X-ray. It is still, in fact, uh, causing damage to the cell and to the body. And, and so this calcium is, is really the key of it. You know, calcium is good in, in small amounts. It's uh, used through the body's natural systems, again, to regulate cell motility and even cell death and apoptosis and other things like that. But, um, but the body has its own very, uh, very careful systems to control when calcium is going inside the cell and not. Uh, the oh. EMF comes in and disrupts this and causes um, a lot of problems through chronic exposure to this. It's definitely a, a stressful thing in our environment. It is, it's not something we ever had uh, ancestrally. Nowadays, there, there's like a billion, billion times more um, microwave frequency. So frequencies in the cell phone range of like a gigahertz or so than we, yeah. than we had even a hundred years ago. So it is something that uh, has been shown biologically to have adverse effect at the cellular level. And what's interesting is that there is a kind of a tie into autoimmune and to MS. And that's through, um, you know, for, for MS and for other things, they prescribe calcium channel blockers. People report, and also in animal studies, you see kind of amelioration of symptoms by using calcium channel blockers. Calcium channel blockers close the voltage gates and they prevent the calcium from getting inside. Uh, but we have a modern environment of man-made EMF from cell phone signals and from electricity, unshielded of wiring that, that exposes us and is basically constantly a source of the calcium ions opening and the voltage gates being triggered in our cells. So um, uh, you, could, you could obviously prescribing calcium channel blockers is one approach, but another approach is to protect yourself from this a natural uh, stimulus that's that's causing all this calcium uh, dis dysfunction, basically. And um, um, the interesting tie-in then uh, back to well, what do we do about it if we don't want to take calcium channel blockers? We don't and we don't want to use, or, or we would prefer to avoid pharmacological approaches. Well, sauna once again is is a really interesting candidate. Uh -huh. So so uh, sauna has been shown. In, in, by two different cellular kind of pathways to reverse these same damaging effects um, that the EMF stress is causing in the cells. Sauna therapy has been shown to increase uh, tetrahydrobiopterin, so BH4, increases BH4, which reduces peroxynitrite. So you see um, studies with fibromyalgia patients and chronic fatigue syndrome uh, patients where they have improvement in their symptoms through sauna therapy and the, and, and the cellular mechanism is pretty well understood now that um, one of them is to reverse proxynitrite um, concentration, which is, a, is a, you know, a, an out of control oxidative stress cycle in the body. And the other is through uh, vascular shear stress, which is one of the things that heat therapy does. So the heat therapy, the, the sauna therapy is literally uh, on top of the detoxification, on top of the protein rebuilding, um, um, is uh, has a kind of a EMF damage reversal effect, and so something that really we it's 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 people think of sauna as a luxury, but I think it's really becoming a necessity nowadays. And and so yeah. uh, I mean, really for for just for for so many things, and I think that that is really in a in a kind of a bird's eye perspective why we see these amazing longevity studies with sauna is that it's doing all of these things. Um, at, at all levels. And it's um, really, really quite fascinating. And this is kind of newer research too, but there's even a tie in with, um, with uh, immunoprotection, uh, which is really, I, from my understanding, you, you could correct me here, certainly, but I think this is kind of a newer understanding that heat shock proteins um, originally were thought to be kind of pro inflammatory outside of the cell. But now we're seeing uh, with um, more updated research quite the opposite effect. In fact, the heat shock proteins can go out of the cell and they have like an immune tolerizing effect where they get the, they, they help the body um, uh, metabolize and get rid of inflammatory proteins. And they also 
help control the T cell like immune cell response. And um, there's an interesting study on reversing diabetes that they've seen this effect. So, you know, it's still, this is still being studied, but certainly um, there's a tie in here where the, 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 and we're talking about heat therapy this entire time, by the way, the, the, the effect of sitting and having the body be heated um, um, is that we're, we're seeing a, an anti-inflammatory effect too that is uh, calming the immune system, basically. And, uh, how many minutes should uh, someone be shooting for? Uh, do you need to do this for an hour, uh, five minutes? What, what kind of time? Uh, anytime we do sauna, we want to sweat profusely for five or ten minutes. And so depending on what you're using it, it, that will determine the duration of the session with sauna space, especially with our new, our brand new uh, light bulbs that are basically hotter with more radiance that we're coming out with. We'll have them at the retreat. Uh, they're coming out in June. Uh, I'm only doing 20 minute sessions now. I used to do 30, 35, 40 minute sessions. Now I'm sweating uh, pretty strongly in about 10 minutes. And so I get from 10 to 20 minutes, uh, a strong sweat response. That's all you need. And ideally, you do that every day. If not every day, then at least a couple times a week. And uh, does it hurt if you go longer? If like, you know, you sort of appreciate the meditative experience instead of doing 20 minutes, you stay in there for an hour. What's the consequence of a longer sweat? Yeah, a, a longer sweat can be had. And, and in our sauna, you can turn the lamps down so you can do longer with less intensity or keep it high intensity. There's a limit to how much you want to heat the body, though. We're, we're doing what's called uh, ormetic stress. So... We want, just like if we're doing exercise, uh, there's a certain amount of, of good stress that we want here to promote beneficial response beyond which it becomes, uh, um, there's no more good effect or it may even be bad effect with, the, with okay. heat stress in the body. You don't want to overheat the body. You want to get a three or four, two to four degree temperature raise. So mm -hmm. uh, we limit sauna, you know, in sauna space, we limit the session to an hour. Okay. And typically, people don't need that much. Uh, and so, in your newer bulbs, will you be put, uh, changing that limit then to half an hour? Or uh, we'll be re recommending that you sweat strongly for five or ten minutes. So we'll say, if you're doing four bulbs, we'll say you know maximum thirty or forty minutes is recommended. If you use three bulbs, or if you have heat sensitivity issues, uh, many people start out with two bulbs and, and start out with kind of kind of titrate up to a, a longer session. It's very individual, Terry, and, and I, I hesitate to like put everybody into the same protocol. Yes, Some people absolutely. can only do five minutes, but yes. for those who are accustomed to sauna and love, the, love it and, and are used to it, yeah, 30 or 40 minutes is, is fine. And uh, you've had uh, single bulb units in the past? We have, uh, uh, and I have one kind of at the desk here. I keep popping it into view and out. Yeah. Um, this is... Uh, this is primarily used for spot therapy, uh, for doing light and heat therapy on the body uh, in a localized fashion, but it's increasingly being used for environmental therapy. So um, it, uh, this, the, the, this, this, um, this non-flickering high, high, uh, you know, high wattage bulb actually counteracts the flicker effect of artificial lighting around us, like fluorescent lighting. Um, yeah or LED lighting. Flickering light is like a strobing light in your face. It's a nervous stressor. It, it's kind of a part of our modern toxic environment we're in all day long, uh, as well as fluorescent light and blue light, uh, excuse me, LED light being blue light only sources. So blue light is a free radical forming uh, wavelength. It, it's just really high energy. So um, uh, if we have to work under fluorescent lights and with computer screens and stuff, uh, with one of these, we can make the environment a lot more tolerable. So people are also using it after dark um, at home for a source of blue light, free lighting. Mm -hmm. um, I can actually show you the flicker effect, I think, really quick. Yeah. Um, let's see if I can do this with one hand. So this is a flicker meter. It measures the flicker rate of flickering light. It's going to make noise when it measures a flicker. See how it goes down quite a bit? Yeah. So that's yep. the effect that it has. Um, turn that off. And this is a fluorescent light bulb, by the way. Yeah. These are the, this is the, the typical lighting we use for energy efficiency everywhere now. And uh, unfortunately, it, has, it does have um, 
a toxic effect on our biology. And the more we get away from our ancestral environment, which was only incandescent light, lots of near infrared light, which we get here uh, from sunlight, being naked on the equator, being without any man-made electromagnetic stress, and certainly, you know, following the, the daily cycle of light, uh, of light and day and then darkness at night, uh, the more we, I think we, we develop the diseases of civilization and autoimmune is becoming, you know, such a prevalent, you know, a prevalent Absolutely. issue in our society. It's really disturbing. And it is, it is related to not having enough near, you know, near infrared light. That's, uh, you know, something that we could talk about real quick at the end here. Um, yeah. so we, this is near infrared light. This is, this is, uh, this is, a uh, a fundamental aspect of our ancestral environment. We got this every day in every cell of the body. So every cell of the body benefits from this light therapy and the, the mitochondrial healing effects that come uh, as a result of it. And, um, and there's even tie-ins to the heat shock therapy and the sauna. So um, um, calcium, and there's a tie-in to EMF as well. So I'll give you those two because I think they're really interesting and it's kind of a new understanding that I have as well. Uh, certain wavelengths of near infrared and red light have been shown to increase heat shock protein expression. So the light therapy is accelerating and promoting the effects that we're trying to get with the heat therapy. So there's not just two acting independently. There is a synergy here where we would ideally do both of them together. And that's why sauna space is so unique. We're doing both of these together because we're using the incandescent light source for our light and our heat. So that's the one time, that's one example. The other thing is the EMF. We talked about calcium, um, how calcium has an adverse effect if there's way too much calcium uh, coming into the cell because of the, the EMF stress that we get. If you have way too much calcium that goes into the cell, that's a trigger for apoptosis, actually. It's how uh, the cell um, basically, the body decides to kill the cell off to save the greater organism or the rest of the tissues. So calcium um inhibits uh heat shock protein for i think it's a hsp 70 it's one of the heat shock proteins that's been studied there are many of them so the calcium is actually an inhibitor of the expression of that protein so um you know there's there's a strong argument to be made that the the emf stress you know trying to do sauna therapy under um, um all this microwave stress all this emf stress is actually counteracting the ability of the body to to optimally respond in the way we want and to um, and to do what we're we're intending it to do. So, for people who ask, well, hey, what's what does it matter if I have EMF protection just a half an hour a day in in the sauna space sauna? You know, I've all day long out in this electro smog, and that's the answer. The answer is it it, it makes the therapy fundamentally more effective to do it under uh, the protection of a Faraday cage. And, and I think that if you do this every day, if you have a practice like this every day and you're, um, you know, you're, 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 you're focused, you know, you're taking appreciation of, of what a ancestral diet is, what a proper diet is, um, what you promote, Terry, um, I think that you can go out into this toxic world and handle it and you can be strong. It, um, cer it certainly improves your resilience. Absolutely. So, well, um, at the seminar, what all will you be having, uh, Richard? Brian, to, uh, check for people to check out. Yeah, so we'll have, of course, uh, we'll have two of our Faraday sauna, so everybody will be able to try that out. Um, and we'll have our new, and uh, everything will be, um, um, everything will have our new Thermalite bulb, which you see one of here. Yep. And uh, uh, you'll be able to try it out in person there. You also, we'll have a little comparison set up too, where you, you can see a regular incandescent uh, heat lamp. And then yes. the sauna space thermal light bulb, and it's really dramatic. We'll we'll show you the measurement with the irradiance meter. It's it's three to five times as much uh, near infrared irradiance. It also feels hotter if you just put your hand in front of the old standard bulb and the new sauna space bulb, and you'll be able to try it out and see you know um, what this light and this heat therapy really is for those of you who've never felt or never been in an environment where there is no EMF, where there's no cell phone signal. It's, a, it's an interesting feeling. It, it's kind of liberating. It feels quiet to the senses. It's very unique. It doesn't feel like uh, a typical sauna for those of you who have tried sauna before. Uh, it's, it's, 
if the, the environment feels really natural inside and that literally ha that has to do with the light therapy, the heat therapy, kind of our back to nature design, our aesthetic, but also this, this EMF escape. It's all, it, it's almost a third ter uh, therapy. It's mm -hmm. you know, uh, EMF deprivation or, or it's like a deprivation therapy where. I know. I was just thinking it's sort of like a, a deprivation tank. I mean, you're, you're, people get accustomed to it. Like we get accustomed, we make habits in in life and and we get stuck and then that's why we call it a habit but this habit of being under the stress of man-made emf is um it's it's a thing that's not going away and it and when it's not there you actually can feel it over a time and, and you become more sensitive to it and it's um it's it's something that people need to be aware of as uh, as we move into more modern cell phone technology we have this new 5g technology rolling out so increased wattages of the current 4G frequencies, introduction of higher frequencies. All of this, you know, cries out for uh, um, increasing awareness of, of the issue that we have here. Um, there's really no yeah. escaping it. We need, we, need, we need solutions to protect ourselves from it and to recover from the damage it's causing. Yeah, I, I do wonder if we're if at some point we're all gonna be wanting to figure out how to sleep. Uh, in uh, EMF uh, uh, protecting uh, environments somehow. Uh, I expect that Absolutely. that will be coming. So I'll, I'll yeah. be looking, looking, Brian, for you guys to come up with uh, that kind of product for us to think about how your clients who come to appreciate the EMF blocking, uh, what options that if they decide they want to add EMF uh, blocking while they sleep at night. Yeah, well, I'll give you a little teaser then. I actually already have one built for my house, for my son's bed that I just made. And uh, it's wonderful. Well, well, <laughs> I've I'll just look been trying to... it out. It's not ready for, you know, for the public yet. But um... Well, we look forward to learning more. And, and uh, well, then I guess we'll have something to talk about for next year. Cause, because I, I, I certainly expect uh, that the... Uh, Interest in this area and the biologic effects uh, will probably increase. So um, this will be, yeah. I think this will. And be we're really we're really on the forefront of it. Our our, our first uh, sauna, our first Faraday sauna was um, was premium price. It was uh, expensive. The new one is um, reduced. It's almost half. It's about half the price of the other of the last year's upgrade. And that's because I I. I decided to make my own fabric basically. So yeah. we're, we're definitely, we're innovating here. We're, we're making this more accessible. And, and, and so I think, I think ultimately, you know, th those are the, th that's the grand solution here is, is uh, EMF shield your healing space and EMF shield your bed space. And then yeah. the rest of the day, it's, it's okay. Uh, it's a, it's kind of inordinately hard to shield the office environment where you, if you need to be able to answer the phone, and, and, and so forth. But if you're already sleeping, you don't need to be connected to the internet and be plugged in and be yeah. soaking in all of the right. signal. Uh, and certainly, and the same thing in the sauna, it, it need, need not be in there. And it's, um, I don't know why it didn't happen until, until we came to the game, but uh, we're the only ones doing this right now where we're shielding the entire sauna environment. Well, good. Well, you know, as always, it's always lots of fun to uh, chat with you and see what's up. And I uh, so look forward to seeing you. It, this will uh, all come much more quickly as we're getting down to our final uh, months of preparation here. Um, and uh, I look forward to uh, trying out these new products. Yeah, thank you, Terry. I'm glad you, you had me. I look forward to the event as well. It's one of our favorite ones. Excellent. Well, here's a big hug and kiss to you and your team. Thank you, Terry. All right. Yours as well. All right. Thanks so much, Brian.